how the cannabis thing got started was, I guess, when I was, I don't know, 15 years old. I decided I'd grow some, some pot. So I planted this seed and had it upstairs in my bedroom and plant came up. Yeah, so I was watering it and stuff. And then I guess I never watered it for a while and, and uh, my mother took care of it for me. <laughs> my name is Greg Bjornsson um, from Kandahar, close to Winyard. I farm, uh, my parents' farm, uh, who was their parents and their grandparents' farm. Our family came to Canada from Iceland through North Dakota. They settled here in 1905 and we still farm today. When my wife Marlis and I got married, uh, we had purchased the hog operation from my dad. And so we raised pigs. And that was, uh, we were married in October of 83. And August of 84, the barn caught fire. And we lost 650 animals. And we rebuilt. And... Did that till 1989, and there was just really no money in it. It was a lot of work, and, and we just weren't getting ahead. In the meantime, my dad had uh, purchased some leafcutter bees, and then we started in the leafcutter bee industry. And we've been doing that for 35 years. Farming is, you know, you just have no control. You don't know if it's going to rain or shine, and, and that's what you need to, uh, to do to just pray for rain and, and sunshine. I thought, well, there's got to be a better way of farming. So, 111 Cannabis was formed. You grow it hydroponically. You have total control on your production, everything. So that's, that's where we're gonna go. The cannabis farmers. The family has, uh, totally committed themselves to helping get 111 up and going and so it's more of a family business and we're going to work there we're going to work our asses off because we have to and it's all part of farming you know you have to work When you have an experience, you got to learn from it. And I lost my brother when I was 14. He was 16. We were in a car accident. And I thought, okay, I have to keep on going. And so I have to, have to farm. I wasn't going to farm. Uh, I knew my brother. He was the farmer. He was the guy that was all fixing the tractors and telling me what to do and all that. And, and uh yeah, so when he, he passed on, um, I knew I had to stay on the farm. Once we got into the bees, you know, then we were a little more affluent, I guess. So Morris and I went on a holiday to Barbados with my parents. And, uh, oh, I was pretty excited to be there. So I was climbing mango trees and all that. And, then we went to the beach to watch the sunset, and I ran on the beach, dove in the water, cranked my neck, broke it. When I got back to Canada, they x-rayed me, and, and I had six vertebrae cracked, and C1 on both sides a little bit. 
they said if I was a little heavier, I would have been dead. But so I had to learn from that. You know, don't, don't get too excited about stuff. <laughs> and then another traumatic experience I had. Uh, I was carbon monoxide poisoned in our bee shed, a faulty propane heater, and I was in a coma for two days, and I did wake up, and I knew when I woke up, you know, I'm not going to be the same. I, knew, I just knew that. Told Morris that, and it kicked the hell out of my emotions. Um, I, I, I couldn't really feel anything. It took me a year to laugh. And, you know, that's... There's just so much more. Oh, Lord. I see what brings me here It's a mother to all my wanderings The valley's green will age with me It's dirt will shine and linger It's, uh family that is spread around right now and sweet things that we're all going to come back together work together here and birds will sing from tops of trees and sound like falling angels my legacy is to leave my children 111 and their children and so on and so forth. 111 is going to thrive just because of family. You know? That's easy. If you have a good attitude and uh, you're grateful, thankful, loving, that's all that matters. It's been a long, long haul getting here, um, but it's going to happen. I know it.